So I'm just swinging by Doogie's shop to check on how things are going with the 63 Beetle and the 54 Fargo. We're having fun converting to electric. <laughs> <laughs> update here we've uh, been doing quite a bit of stuff in here they were at the shop and we're trying to get some of the mechanical stuff sorted out in the truck before we go ahead and tear it down later on for bodywork um, I've been driving it around quite a bit before we put it in the shop so uh, yeah it's up on the hoist as you can see you can see we're up on the hoist here right now um, we've taken the plug out of the uh, the charge plug here uh, and we've sort of reattached it behind this uh, panel here because we're going to have to fabricate some way of um, keeping the vintage look using the original filler neck and an original gas cap and then have the charge unit behind there so we can pull the gas cap off, plug the charger in. So that's something that we're looking at uh, uh, doing here shortly. Um, another reason to stop driving it around, you can see the pr pretty sad state of these tires right now, so it's only a matter of time before these buggers break. Looks like uh, the original blow. tires. Yeah. So we're waiting on wheels coming. Uh, what, what did I tell you, two weeks? Probably a week now. About a week now for, for wheels. So um, uh, once those wheels come, we'll get the tires coming as well, and we can get these things on some decent tires. But yeah, I was driving it around, so you can see underneath here that uh, there's a little bit of road grime and dirt, because we were driving it around doing a bunch of testing on it. But uh, you've never really seen underneath here. No, it looks really good. Yeah, if you come up to the front, you can see the underside of the Hyper 9 on the, on the bottom here. Um, some of the cables uh, underneath. Uh, you can see the bottom of the battery box under there as well. Yeah. Uh, we've got our adapter plate, our Ford transmission here. And we've, this is where our electric vacuum pump for filling up this reservoir so that we have our power brakes. And this has been on here for a while. But this is the first time you can get a really good look at this system underneath the truck. So, uh, yeah, that keeps our, our brakes uh, A-powered. But then when the vehicle is parked, one of the problems that we had earlier was that there was no way to actually set a park brake. So we were actually using chocks in the wheels to stop the thing from rolling away. Yeah, I remember that. So uh, uh, Doogie and I managed to sort of design and fabricate uh, a linear actuator system. So we now have, using the original park uh, brake cables into the Ford rear axle, you can see there's a cable here and a cable here to actuate the, uh, the rear part brake. This thing's capable of 270 po uh, uh, pound feet of yeah, line, you don't linear want too force. Much tension, you don't, yeah, you don't want rip to the be, thing apart. You don't want to be snapping these lines, but at the same time, you also want enough weight that'll hold the vehicle, right? So we actually have a chip which is located inside the truck uh, where we can dial the number of amps that we allow this motor to receive. And once it hits that, uh, once there's enough tension on those cables and we hit that, Amp, uh, amp limit, it shuts off power to the actuator and the actuator holds it. So right now, the part brake is actually set. So the, the, the part brake is set on the truck. So this truck's not going anywhere. But Doogie's gonna switch the part brake off and you'll hear what the, uh, you'll see the actuator in, uh, working. That's the part brake off. So the part breaks off and then when we reset the part brake, you see there's a little uh, micro switch right here. And again, this is just a prototype. We'll actually want to encase this so that it's watertight. But we actually have a micro switch here which sends a signal up to the dashboard so we have a light on when the, when the uh, uh, brake is actually set. So go ahead and switch your brakes on there, Duke. You can see the switch just actuates there. So the switch is now on. So now we know the part brake is set and uh, I mean the, the, the tension in the cables there as well and it works great yeah, that's great so yeah and now we eliminated the need for us to run mechanical cables all the way up into the uh, into the front there so and then the other system that we're working on is the steering so you can see over here that the steering's been all taken apart here so there's the drag link for the steering the whole the entire steering box has actually been disconnected uh, we're rebuilding the the original steering but we're actually going to incorporate a Nissan electric uh, power assist system. 
and we're hooking it up to a GM column. So we'll still have the, the, um, the, the classic look of the, the, the GM old school steering column with an integral uh, signal switch. And it's got adjustable tilt there as well, which the truck never had before. But uh, it's going to have some creature comforts there, I guess. And we're going to have the power assist steering on here as well. It'll make it a much better driving experience anyway. One of the other things we've been doing is mapping out the electrical system in here because when we wired the truck up, uh, it was sort of done in that one bay garage at the house there. And uh, I've got some written down schematics of the way things were, were put together. And all of this has to come out so we can redo the firewall and do the bodywork, etc., etc. So you can see we've got the, we've got the hood off the vehicle. Um, but yeah, so I've gone through and started to, to map all of these wires and put them out in a schematic so that we can, we, we have information about how to repair stuff later. Uh, this is the, uh, the other thing we're working on is the, how are you laying out there? yeah, he's putting, uh, uh, this is a steering box. This is the original factory steering box and uh, uh, we've got some new seals and bearings coming for it. Uh, so Doug is going to rebuild it and uh, we're going to have a nice fresh steering box and then once that's been reinstalled, we can start working on the power assist steering unit. And uh, we'll probably, probably take this fender off to do that, be a wee bit easier. Right? We'll just take the whole front clip off, yeah, it'll be way it. easier. This is the floor pan for the bug, and uh, it was rotten. So these are brand spanking new floor pans. So they've been welded in. And then this is going to be pretty cool. At the back here, all of this, uh, Fancy schmancy stuff there is uh, the setup for the air raid suspension. It's going to have an air raid suspension. This thing will. On a beetle. On a beetle. It'll, 63 beetle. It'll basically be able to sit on its belly if it needs to, you know. So it'll, it'll, it'll give it a, a Can pretty. You make it hot? <laughs> well, it'll be, you know, it'll be a pretty cool uh, sort of ride height uh, or part height. You know, it'll just give it a kind of cool look, you know. Absolutely. And uh, anyway, so that's all been sort of welded in, but it still needs to be seam sealed and then painted, of course. But we're going to sit that temporarily under the beetle so we can run the cables. And uh, he's already set up the, uh, this hole here, so we're actually gonna run the, the wiring or the cables, the high voltage cables, through the center tunnel and pop up, because the motor, of course, is at the back. And then uh, eventually we'll have the transmission and uh, mo a motor adapter, etc., in the back here. So the motor's just sitting over here by the table. You can see it waiting to go, all painted up in red. Yeah. So yeah, that's the uh, a AC, Curtis AC 75, 88 horsepower, 180 pound feet of torque. So that'll be, uh, that'll be more than sufficient to power a little Beetle. It's gonna double the horsepower and triple the torque. So it should give it a wee bit of performance. Yeah, so you gotta beef up the Beetle to handle that. Well, power. you know what, we'll, go, we'll see how long it lasts before we need to do that. <laughs> you, you're gonna break it first and then fix it? Yep. yep. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's gonna last long. Yep. Um, we're gonna be hooking that up to an Orion 2 uh, BMS and the issue with the Ryan 2 BMS is it needs to have power any time that the, 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 the Beetle is, is plugged in for charging. So you can see uh, Doogie's actually fabricated a little plate here so we actually have a plug here for the uh, J1772 recharging. So the theory is we're going to, uh, any time he wants to recharge, he can pop the hood, plug it in and then uh, it will have some sort of a stop there so that the hood will just sit slightly ajar with the plug in there keep the weather off it, but it's hidden away at that point as well. So on the outside of the car, there's no, you know, a hints that it's an electric vehicle until you pop the hood and you see that stuff, right? right? A sleeper. Exactly. So it looks a bit like a wiring nightmare right now, but there is a, a logic to the mayhem here. We eventually will loom all this st sort of stuff up after we've done the test on it. But uh, what we've done is that these relays here and the AVC2 modular EV power uh, unit allows us to take the signals when the vehicle is plugged in and we can uh, um, basically use the relay in here to fire up one of these relays, which will give us power to the BMS. Once the BMS can register the battery conditions, it will, be, uh, it will allow the contactors in the contactor box to close switch on the Elcon unit and start the charge process. So it's like multiple steps before the batteries are allowed to charge. And that way the BMS has full control over the, whether or not the batteries are safe to charge. So we've actually got redundant systems. There's a main contactor in here. And then the, we also have the, the two relays down here as well. So there's a, and, and there's an internal um, stop in the old Elcon there. Once it reaches a specific voltage, it'll stop charging. Yeah, as the well. overall voltage. The overall voltage, yeah. 
So we've got lots of protection here, so we should be, uh, we should be uh, safe. And of course, the first time you charge any vehicle, you want to monitor it during its entire charge cycle just to make sure everything works as it does. I did that with the truck. I sat there and charged it while I was working in the shop one day and made sure that all the contactors worked as they should. So we'll do the same with the Beetle. So when where, where are you laying those uh, Tesla modules? Uh, yeah, so you wanted two yeah. at the front. There's going to be one here and then one half on half. So just sit one on so top. So not directly on top, they're yeah. going to be yeah. staggered. Yeah. They'll be staggered, yeah. So that'll be the two in the front and then two in the back as well. So there'll be four total. And if you look inside the Beetle, uh, we've got a right here. We've got no floor in here, of course, because it's sitting over there. But we've got the two uh, lower power DC to DC converters in the back firewall there. They're, temp yeah, they're, yeah, they're temporarily uh, positioned. And uh, the two batteries will sit immediately in front of that. And then these cables will run down and through the tunnel to the beat to the contactor box at the front. And uh, that'll tidy all those wires up as well. We were looking at the park brake system. This is the schematic for the park brake system. This is what we uh, use to sort of design. If you take a peek at the screen here. Um, we've got the microcontroller. We have the actuator. We've got this micro switch. And that you can see on this diagram that that micro switch is hooked up to a chip in here. And we've got that chip set up to display on the display on the dashboard. And uh, so anytime the part brake is set, that little micro switch that I pointed out will be actuated. And uh, we should get a display on the dashboard that the part brake is on. When the truck first fires up in the morning, so when you turn the truck on, it'll run through a self-check and then we get a Fargo EV. Oh, nice. And then, uh, then it'll switch over to the, whatever mode the, the screen is on. So here, here's the code itself for the, uh, for the actual um, display. So we've been working on that and then as well as the actual uh, schematic for the, the part brake system. So that was just all of this is for this, this one screen, you know. But then we've got another screen and we're going to take the state of charge information from the battery management system so we can actually display the state of battery capacity on the dashboard. Uh, the other one's going to be used for the 12 volt system so we can monitor the 12 volt uh, charging from the DC to DC converter. And then I'm not even sure what we're going to use the last one for, but it's in there. So. Any ideas? <laughs> Each screen is going to be powered by an individual chip. So we've got these individual chips right here. They're just little Arduino nanos. So they're, they're little microcontrollers that we can use. Right there. These little microcontrollers and we can embed them anywhere. They can be plugged in and programmed. It's basically a miniature version of this chip that I'm using to uh, prototype here. And uh, it can be put inside a box and wired up permanently and uh, we can program it the way we see fit, and once it's plugged in, it's good to go. We designed it using this software, and then Doogie printed out the, the bezel on his 3D printer. So that uh, dashboard that we've sort of made digital reproduces this factory one here. You can, this is the original one. Right. These are all six volt analog, completely useless to us at this point. So we figured that by putting those small screens in, it's about the same size as the factory ones, um, but we'll be able to get some usable information. And when you're looking at the screen when the vehicle is off, you will still use a mechanical speedometer, but then this part will just be black. Electric, zero emission vehicle, go green.